Hey YouTube, it's me. I wanted to give you a two-year update on my keto diet and then also talk about electrolytes and seasonal affective disorder and what you can do about those. So yeah, I've been doing this keto diet for two years and I gotta say it's an, it's just an absolute dream. Uh, I can't imagine eating any other way. Um, I'm, I'm at about 189 pounds right now and I've just been kind of hanging out there no matter what I do. It's it's funny. It's almost like my body just hit this 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 point where it wants to be at, and it just it's really hard to budget any lower or any higher. Um, I started working two jobs, one of them which is very physical in nature, and then the other one is just kind of the uh, programming gig that I have. And then I also started uh, well, I was moving for about two weeks from one apartment to the other and working these two jobs. And what happened was that I didn't have enough time to eat and I was like blowing through all kinds of calories and I got down to like 186 pounds without even noticing it. Um, and and once I stopped uh, that, that madness of moving in addition to working the two jobs, like my weight just kind of naturally crept up to about 190 and it's just, you know, been hanging out there for a month ever since. It's, it's really funny. It's... Um, on this diet, you know, as as a person who was an overeater all his life uh, and suffering symptoms of type 2 diabetes and just general metabolic dysfunction, it's it's so strange to have my, my weight just kind of want to be stable. It's almost like being a normal person, you know, to me. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, very happy with keto. Uh, as far as my heart goes, uh, I haven't, you know, it's it's been two years. I... You know, the first six months, I was still having a little bit of the chest pains that I had since I was 18 years old, but just haven't had them uh, after that six months, you know? I mean, I eat tons of cholesterol and saturated fat, and I don't know what to tell you. My heart it just operates awesome, you know? And I actually have more um, more stamina and and sort of, like, physical power than I used to have when I was eating a lot of carbs. So yeah in that regard this is awesome and and as far as my you know my knee and and whatnot the injuries that i sustained go uh they're actually kind of starting to heal and it, it's actually been three years since i injured myself and last year i was barely able to walk so uh, one person had a theory that uh if you don't eat enough enough carbohydrates your muscles don't have enough uh glucose to move and and you know, repair themselves and whatnot, but I haven't found that to be the case. I've actually healed up fairly well, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, considering the last year I couldn't really barely even walk, um, and this year, around the same time, I'm working a very physical job, um, that, and moving, you know, which is basically means 10 hours on my feet, I'm doing pretty damn good, <laughs> so... Yeah, I don't think uh, the low carb diet really had any interactions with uh, with the injuries that I sustained, and they're very slowly improving. So, yeah, um, I haven't had like any any kind of like this is common for people that start the low carb diet. Like they get a, a pain kind of like right right around this area. I haven't had that pain for like a year now, um, and I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe gallbladder's mad because you're forcing it to work really hard or or what, but that's gone away entirely. Um, I'm probably eating about 20 to 40 grams of carbs a day, um, and uh, yeah, I'm just kind of sticking to that, you know? Nowadays, I don't really uh, track my carbohydrates or calories. I just kind of eat whenever my body tells me to, um, and when I get in a situation where other people are trying to get me to eat more than than I should, I just, I just kind of don't. Uh, the other thing about a low-carb diet is that you know, um, proteins and fats are much more dense in calories than carbohydrates are, so your stomach will shrink. It will shrink a lot, especially over a long period of time. Like I ate, um, I ate Thanksgiving dinner, and there's just all kinds of stuff uh, to consume. Uh, and my wife, like, awesomely cooked like a keto Thanksgiving meal, and there was just like ten things that she cooked, and you know, like I ate like a plate of food and I was just like like stuffed you know and like it's it's funny like 
I just couldn't put any more food in, you know, like it's impossible to overeat beyond that point. So <laughs> I actually didn't even gain any weight from that alone. It's just like, you kind of like you just hit this, this limit with your stomach eventually. Uh, and, and you, you can't surpass it. Kind of the opposite of what happens to you when you have a uh, metabolic disorder where you're, you just keep eating more and more and more and your stomach gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, yeah. So yeah, keto's awesome. I would I would recommend everyone do it. So uh, let's talk about electrolytes. Um, this is often a problem when you're starting the keto diet, um, especially when you when you're in your first week and your body's adapting to running off carbohydrates. You will shed so much water because uh, your body actually ties up a lot of water to uh, to be able to even process carbohydrates. In fact, within your first month, you'll probably lose like 20 pounds and, and like five to 10 of those pounds will actually be a water weight. And actually, if you ever cheat on the diet, you will gain like easily five pounds if you just were to go on, on a sugar spree because your body would just like just retain a bunch of water. So um, when you first begin the diet, you're going to shed all kinds of water and with it are going to go your electrolytes and all throughout as you're losing weight you're going to be needing a lot of water because your body is just going through fat like crazy and you know it just requires a lot of water um, and so thus you know you need more electrolytes than you normally need which means you know on the upside that it's okay to pig out on salt in fact it's actually kinda easy to run low on salt um, since you just go through so much of it um, the easiest thing to run low on is potassium and the symptoms for running low on potassium are usually muscle issues um, constipation um, racing heart if you're really really deficient your heart can get out of whack um, so it's very important to supplement potassium in particular on this diet so there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, there's a lot of things you can buy at the store. The diet doesn't actually offer much in the way of potassium intake uh, in terms of what you'll be eating. Um, but the things you can buy at the store, you can use to remedy your deficiency quite easily. So here's one one thing we started out with. It's new salt. Um, this these kinds of products where they've they've substituted potassium for sodium or they've cut you know 50 percent potassium 50 percent sodium and put it in like a salt container are available at pretty much any supermarket it's not hard to find um, this one I believe is entirely potassium uh, from what I can tell and yeah that's 530 milligrams of potassium per six tablespoon so you can actually throw this in like a, a diet drink or an energy drink or you know um, one of those sugar-free sports drinks to just up the uh, potassium content and what I actually like to do since I'm trying to avoid artificial sweeteners today is I use something like this um, which is uh, stevia based um, and I'll, I'll throw it in some water with some potassium and just drink that and just it's just kind of a uh, get a sports drink you know without the aspartame or sucralose or whatever another way to get potassium is to buy potassium bicarbonate um, this is a two pound bag that I purchased off Amazon it's oh wait no eh, one pound whatever uh, they sell it for wine making and um, this is pretty much good great stuff because the bicarbonate is not um, sort of caustic like if you were to just eat if you were to put this stuff on your tongue it would burn whereas this stuff on the other hand the bicarbonate doesn't really have that issue it's just kind of a different form um, and I will throw I will dole out a little bit of this and then throw it in a, uh, in, a in water or whatever to get potassium as well or even sprinkle it on food um, so that's another way to do it um, there's also brewer's yeast. This stuff is chock full of potassium. It's a little bit carby. Uh, you're looking at about maybe eight grams of carbs per per um, 500 milligrams of potassium. So that kind of sucks. But 
if we compare this to, say, a banana, we'll look at these nutrition facts. We've got about 30 grams of carbohydrates for, what is it, where is the potassium? It's hanging out here somewhere. For 806 milligrams of potassium. So this would screw up your diet alone and you would only get a tiny fraction of what you actually need in terms of potassium. Whereas this, and, and this, this brand, they do not mention the potassium content on the back for some stupid reason. But I found uh, a vintage label here and in this older label they said I don't think this carbohydrate counts down now um, but the carbohydrate count would probably be 8 grams or so today and you would get 510 milligrams off of this so this is actually uh, quite a good source and it also has all kinds of uh, different vitamins in it as well uh, brewer's yeast is basically like a a uh, vitamin and amino acid super powerhouse of a, f of a food so it's actually kind of cool to have around anyway um, you can sprinkle it on food and it doesn't really impart much of a taste so yeah between between these these three things you can very easily get your the potassium you need I think I think correct me if I'm wrong the daily potassium requirement is somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 milligrams something like that um, for people that are on a low carb diet and then the sodium is like actually quite high I don't I don't know a figure off the top of my head but uh, another thing you might want to supplement is magnesium although that's fairly easy to get from um, from some of the stuff we eat so yeah so yeah you you really gotta watch out for potassium deficiency it's the only problem that you can really run into when you're on this diet and if you avoid the symptoms like cramping and constipation uh, muscle issues um, racing heart or whatever you can actually uh, run into some serious danger because your your heart requires potassium in order to continue beating I was reading this article about this this vegetarian guy and he was trying to vilify low carb diets uh, and it was so funny. He found this guy on Reddit, on the Reddit keto page, who had a heart attack, uh, like, weeks after starting keto. And, um, you know, he didn't really explain, like, what precluded it or anything. But I went through this guy's uh, user history, and it turns out uh, the thing that saved him at the hospital was given, being given potassium. So he ran out of potassium, and he... Um, he ignored the deficiency symptoms, didn't tell anybody, didn't read the literature that says, hey, you need to supplement potassium, and the dude had a heart attack. Of course, the guy actually had heart problems before he started the diet, so it was like heart problems plus completely depleting yourself of, of this mineral uh, or electrolyte. So it was just kind of funny. It was The vegetarian guy was trying to insinuate that you know, uh, low-carb diets will give you heart attacks and you'll just die. <laughs> but this actually I looked through the, the guy's um, user history and like he's back on the diet and he actually he <laughs> there's tons of posts from him where he's like telling people you need to take potassium you need to take potassium and yeah so that's that so yeah if you if you fall into some kind of deficiency symptom where your body doesn't just feel right um, you you should probably start consulting uh, the reddit keto page or any low carb support group, even an Atkins support group, and tell them about your symptoms. Uh, but otherwise, these are easily, easily remedied by by usually taking some form of potassium, which which you're shedding like crazy, especially when you're losing weight. Um, and make sure to get tons of water. Uh, you can get dehydrated very easily, uh, especially when you start it on the diet, uh, because your body is not used to this. Uh, other than that, you'll eventually, you know, as you do a low-carb diet for a couple months, you'll eventually start recognizing signs of um, deficiency of potassium if you're not supplementing or you're supplementing inadequately or kind of intermittently, and then you'll recognize those signs and be like, oh, I need potassium or salt or something, you know. It's not really a problem. I've never actually ran into any kind of uh, problem other than uh, some muscle cramping and whatnot, um, and as soon as I took uh, potassium and magnesium, boom, it's gone.
So, yeah. Um, yes, I also wanted to talk about seasonal affective disorder. Um, I've had like very serious depression uh, ever since I was about 12 years old, up until very recently. Um, and uh, if you if you look at a bunch of like uh, natural living kind of pages, you know those sort of like uh, Food Babe or uh, Mercola or something. <laughs> Yeah, they'll tell you like try B twelve. It'll it'll magically fix you. Well, the thing is, some people can't actually absorb vitamin B twelve very well. And I recently learned that my dad was one of those people. He would actually take B twelve shots, and actually some vegans end up taking B twelve shots. But uh, with me, I realized that vitamin B twelve uh, deficiency was something that was going on like for probably most of my life. Um, and actually the uh, animal or bacteria sourced B12 that you see um, in multivitamins and in vegetarian supplements and whatnot actually have like an absorbability rate of 1% or so which is why they tend to have like 16,000% daily value uh, so a person like me who can't absorb B12 very well on top of that vegetarian B12 being almost utterly useless. I was in deficiency for a very long time. And so I discovered that I was in deficiency when I had a first my first piece of cooked liver. I had, I went from being kind of grumpy as I usually am to ah, I have a smile on my face for no reason and I'm totally happy and the world's, you know, shiny happy and everything. And it was just it was like it's almost like I had taken some kind of drug. You know, like it was such a radical difference in my mood and my energy and everything. So, I'm going to tip you into something. If you're like me and you've suffered depression for a long time, especially during winter uh, when you start getting less and less sunlight hours, you might have seasonal defective, affective disorder, and part of that might have to do with vitamin deficiencies. So, I found out about this stuff desiccated liver. Right, so eating liver is kind of gross. It, well, I don't like the taste, some people do. But the big problem is that my wife has a very sensitive nose and she cannot stand the smell of uh, liver in the air or anything. I mean, she will almost barf just smelling it. I mean, it's just such a problem for her. So yeah, this is basically, um, this is a supplement made out of liver. They basically uh, suck the moisture out of it and put it in a pill form. Um, doesn't really have a liver taste, actually. Uh, so you can just eat these like any other, uh, any other vitamin or anything. Um, and it has pretty much, uh, let's say, 70% of the, of the good stuff that liver has. So if, if you're suffering of seasonal and affective disorder or you've had depression for a very long time, I can't recommend this enough. Um, this makes all the difference. In fact, uh, at one point I was taking Zoloft and another point I was taking Wellbutrin. I actually think this stuff has helped me more than any of those medications, um, you know, when I was taking them, which is, I stopped taking them a long time ago and just decided I'd deal with the depression and, you know, whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this has become part of part of my uh, medicine cabinet ultimately and makes a huge difference in my mood and despite the fact that I have a hard time absorbing B12 this stuff's powerful and the reason for it is that this is animal format uh, B12 I mean it's kind of like vitamin D right? right like vitamin D2 almost worthless your body can barely do anything with it but vitamin D3 you just take it up right right there and just make use of it um, a lot of these uh, synthetic or animal, or I'm sorry, synthetic or plant forms of vitamins, some of us have a really hard time take, making use of them properly and our absorption rate of the vegetable form is very poor. So you can actually just run into deficiencies eating a standard American diet, which is kind of funny, you know, and yeah, they don't tell you the difference. So this is part of my, my powerhouse for depression, not only depression, but also seasonal affective disorder where, you know, where your depression will worsen as, as you get less sunlight. The other part of it is good old vitamin D3. 
And it's kind of funny, they talk about bone and immune health, but vitamin D3 does so many things. Um, and especially in regards to your mood when you're not getting much sunlight, it makes a huge difference. If, if I take these two things, and you don't have to take these brands, right? Like, these are just my preferred brands. Like, I like Solgar because they're high quality in general. If you take these two things, you will probably have your seasonal affective disorder craziness that happens during the winter or like disappear um, because at least that's what it's done for me and that's what it seems to do for a lot of people so I can't recommend it highly enough I mean it's uh, it's almost December it's you know 20 degrees outside snowing like crazy uh, usually I want to put a gun in my mouth like <laughs> around this time of year for like no reason at all like you know just all kinds of rash irrational uh, depressive thoughts you know and like I've been able to work graveyard <laughs> you know I see about I see about maybe four hours of sun a day and it's not affecting me it's like it's magic <laughs> you know last time I worked graveyard without knowing about about these supplements like I was just going psycho like like Jack and Nicholson in The Shining, you know, just like losing it. <laughs> so, yeah, give it a try, you know, um, and and let me know if if it works for you. Like, I love I love your comments. Um, these uh, these keto videos have have been pretty popular on my channel, and I, I just love hearing like um, your experiences as well. Um, some people have given me really great tips um, on on some some cool like low carb foods that are ready made and and whatnot and I, please keep those coming this is awesome i originally opened up this channel just to just to talk about electric bicycles and electronic music but like i'm loving the feedback that i get from these keto videos so i'll probably continue to do more of them and i might give you like maybe a two and a half year three year update and whatnot so anyway uh thanks for watching keep calm and keto on <laughs>